The scope of the oceans, the force of the wind, and a sense of excitement. Those who have never had the chance to land on an aircraft carrier will never know what they're missing. The aircraft carrier is the most important vessel in the United States Navy because of its ability to carry aircraft throughout the globe. The ability to take off and land aircraft in such a compact ship is a major component. With so much activity concentrated in a small region, engineers have developed elegantly simple tools to keep the process under control. Takeoff is accomplished using the catapult mechanism, while landing is aided by the Fresnel lens and arresting wires. Navy pilots face some of the most challenging encounters when they have to land on the flight deck. U.S. carrier aircraft are large and fast, and the flight deck's runway length of 500 feet is totally inadequate for landing them. Each aircraft requires a tail hook, which is essentially an extended hook connected to the plane's tail in order to land on the flight deck. The pilot's objective is to catch one of the four arresting wires, which are strong cables braided from high tensile steel wire with the tail hook. The arresting wires are joined at both ends to hydraulic cylinders located below the deck and are also extended over the deck. The hydraulic cylinder system absorbs the energy caused by the tail hook snagging and arresting wire, allowing the aircraft to come to a stop. Two seconds are all it takes for a 54,000 pound plane traveling at 150 miles per hour to come to a halt on a 315 foot landing strip thanks to the arresting wire system. For the pilot's convenience, there are four parallel arresting wires, each approximately 50 feet in length. The third wire is the most secure and reliable objective, therefore pilots are going for it. Due to its proximity to the edge of the deck, the initial wire is never targeted. It would be easy to slam into the ship's rear if they attempted to land too low on the first wire. It's okay to sometimes grab the second or fourth wire, but a pilot who wants to reach the next level must be a frequent third wire catcher. The pilot has to come to the deck at the perfect angle to pull off this remarkable stunt. Once returning aircraft stack up in a massive circular flying pattern near the carrier, the landing operation may begin. The planes that are ready to land have their landing order determined by the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center below deck depending on the fuel levels of the aircraft. The pilot will depart from this landing pattern and move toward the ship's rear when it comes ready to land. By radio communication and a set of lights on the deck, Landing Signals Officers or LSOs direct the aircraft to the landing spot. LSOs may wave off a misguided pilot through radio or light to get the jet back on track. Pilots also rely on the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, or the Lens, for assistance during the landing process in addition to the LSOs. The lens is made up of a set of lights and Fresnel lenses fixed to a gyroscope-stabilized base. At varying elevations, the lenses project pinpoints of light into the sky. Depending on the plane's angle of approach, the pilot will see a variety of lights. If the aircraft is in the ideal position, the pilot will see a meatball of amber light next to a string of green lights. The aircraft is coming in too high if the amber light appears above the green lights or too low if the light shows below the green lights. The pilot will notice flashing red lights if the jet is coming in too low. When the aircraft has made contact with the flight deck, the pilot will not turn off the throttle but instead use maximum force to bring the plane to a halt. Even though it seems contradictory, the jet has to be flying fast enough to take off again and circle around for another pass if the tail hook doesn't snag any of the arresting wires. Rather than crashing into the aircraft at the far end of the deck, this kind of bolter may take off from the side of the ship thanks to the 14 degree slope of the landing runway. After a plane touches down, it is immediately hauled away from the landing area and secured to the edge of the flight deck by chains. Aircraft that are not in use are always securely fastened to prevent them from moving about when the deck shakes. The pilots need to be ready for everything, even the roaring flames in the plane. They have a lot of safety gear on hand in case anything goes wrong during takeoff or landing. The flight deck is equipped with a multitude of firefighting tools, including a miniature fire engine, water tanks, and aqueous film foaming form, which is a cutting-edge firefighting agent. There are also nozzles for jet fuel and a number of other useful liquids. There is also the possibility that someone on the flight deck may be blown overboard by a jet engine. That is why there are safety nets around the edges of the flight deck, but the crew also wears float coats, which are buoyant jackets with built-in distress signals that activate when they come into contact with water. Heavy helmets, known as cranial, are worn by those working on the flight deck to protect their heads and ears. Landing in rough conditions 
Every pilot will tell you that landing an airplane in rough weather is no easy feat. Poor visibility, turbulence, and strong crosswinds may all increase the difficulty of landing and the likelihood of an accident. Pilots need to keep their cool, their focus, and their senses to land an airplane safely in such situations. Gathering reliable data on the weather and the state of the runway is the first stage when it comes to landing a plane in hazardous conditions. The stability of the aircraft during landing is dependent on the pilot's awareness of wind shear, gusts, and turbulence. As a consequence, they also need to take the state of the runway into account while deciding the landing speed. Maintaining perfect control of the aircraft throughout the landing approach requires frequent adjustments to the throttle, flaps, and landing gear. Pilots must utilize the rudder and ailerons to keep the plane pointed in the right direction relative to the runway while dealing with heavy crosswinds. A safe landing requires the pilot to accurately evaluate the aircraft's height, speed, and rate of descent as it approaches the runway. When visibility is low, pilots may have to depend only on their aircraft's instruments to safely land. While aircraft carriers have been essential in projecting military force across the world's seas for decades, they still have room for development in a number of key areas. Expanding the use of automation and robots in carrier operations is one solution. By relying on autonomous drones and robots for routine chores like maintenance, refueling, and cargo handling, workers' time may be freed up for other uses. Hypersonic missiles, railguns, and directed energy weapons are just a few examples of cutting-edge weaponry that have room to grow as a field of study. The carrier's offensive capabilities may be greatly improved, giving it an edge in future engagements, provided they are implemented. The ability to better communicate and share information might also help carriers function more efficiently. In order to facilitate greater coordination and efficiency in operations and increase commander situational awareness, Technological advancements like better satellite communications and networked data systems may be used. Lastly, developments in propulsion technology, such as more efficient and sustainable propulsion systems, might extend the range and endurance of carriers, allowing them to react to threats and emergencies with more agility. Landing on a carrier is a both thrilling and terrifying event. It calls for both precision and accuracy, as well as familiarity with the local winds, waves, and climate. It's not easy, and it takes a lot of practice to become good at it. But for the courageous few who take the plunge, the experience may be one of the most thrilling of their lives. Everyone should make it a point to experience the thrill of landing on an aircraft carrier at least once in their lives if they can. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. Until next time, this is Fleet Files signing off. See you in the next video.